Hey, welcome everybody. And if you're tuning in on replay, thanks for watching. Pete Calandra here. And on today's episode of Inside Track, I thought I would do sort of like a beginner's up to intermediate tutorial on mixing a, a jazz track. So I've used this particular track in a bunch of my classes and also in another video where I used some of the Arturia plugins to mix it. But we're going to start from scratch here and I haven't set up a session and we'll just go through the whole thing. And one thing I, I want to talk about before I start this process is that there are sort of like mechanical or preparatory things that I like to do. And then there's the creative stuff with mixing. What I find is very helpful is to sort of at the beginning to separate those out so that you do all the technical slash mechanical things first. Your setup, your routing, your track, uh, coloring, color coding, figuring out where the different sections in the song are, and adding your time-based effects, grouping, all that stuff. And then once that's done, it's a lot easier to focus in on the creative. You don't have to go back and start thinking, what, 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 what output is that? Oh, maybe I should route this to something else. Maybe I should group this. Sort of technical things that get you out of the moment of being creative with your mixes. So I thought that I would just say that in advance. Now, if you like this kind of content, give a thumbs up. Please subscribe. And to be notified, ring that bell. So thanks so much for tuning in or watching after the fact, and let's get started. Also, if this is uh, a, you're watching this live, ask any questions. There's a little bit of a, a lag between when I see the question, well, when you ask the question and when I see it, but I will look up there and um, onto the screen and answer any questions I can during the stream. All right, so let's uh, switch view here, and we're looking at my desktop. And right here, I've got, I'm going to zoom in, a folder, Teen Hijink Stems, or actually it should be Teen Hijinks because that's the name of the song. And it's got the tempo, 151 beats per minute. Now, the tempo is really important as far as I'm concerned because I like to see things as though I was, I'm, I'm a trained musician, so I like to see things as they are they would be on a score and I like to see my measure numbers line up. I also like to order my tracks as I would see them on a score. And that's not something that anybody has to do. That's just my own particular way of doing things. But what you should do is have a method of organizing your tracks that makes sense. So let's take a look here at this and inside of here, you see that I've got baritone sax, baritone sax solo, bass clarinet. I've got three tracks of bass. It's an acoustic bass, direct input, K18, KM184 Neumann mic, TLM103 Norman, Norman mic. So I mic'd up different parts of the bass, and we'll talk about that as we go along. And uh, drums overhead, kick, and then here's snare for drums. And let's just get this consistent. Good. I've got piano, I've got tenor, a tenor solo, and three trumpet tracks. All right, so let's get started with this. So I'm going to open up a new session in Pro Tools. I'm going to create, and I'm going to call this with my naming convention. And I'm going to store this. I'm going to store this for now on my desktop. That's not the best place to work from, but it'll work fine for this particular project. All right, we do not need a click track, so let's delete that. And let's get busy importing tracks. So Command Shift I with Pro Tools. Teen Hijinks. Hijinx stems, 
just select them all. So I'm clicking on the top one, holding the shift key down and clicking on the bottom one. Now, these were done at 16-bit. They were done in 2004. Uh, they still sound really good. I'm working 24-bit now, so we're just going to add those extra zeros that don't really add any fidelity to it. But it is what I... Concert music. Um, actually, Jelani, I like to write music that gets performed or has a purpose. Concert music... I would love to write concert music, but for me, the opportunity to get concert music performed would be next to none. I wrote stuff when I was a graduate student. I wrote string quartet. I wrote some other orchestral works. I got like a sight reading. It's like you spend hours work and days and months and, you know, working on a piece of music and you get one, a couple of rehearsals or one or two performances. When I write film score music, it's for a project that's going to go on air, or if I put out my albums, I can get stuff on to Sirius XM. Uh, so I, I prefer to do that kind of a thing uh, where there's an audience that can actually hear the music. So, all right, let's get back to this. So I'm just going to convert all these, but what you want to do is, this says convert because it's at a different sample rate, and it's going to convert it to the sample rate of the session. But if this said copy, you would select copy. You would not select add at all. And I'll tell you why in a second. So I'm going to con convert those and then I'm going to open. Choose the destination folder. Now it's processing all the audio. Yeah, that, that's kind of a that's kind of a thing when you're working on music. I have, um, I spent six months working on my string quartet for my graduate degree. Not, not hours and hours a day, but I got uh, two rehearsals and a run through. And then it's been sitting in the closet ever since then. So I don't think of that as a growth industry, to be honest with you. I want people to hear the music I write. That being said, if you get outlets for writing orchestra concert music go for it okay so i'm going to do new track session start and there are all my stems let me resize them so that it looks good now the reason why i did convert or i would do copy is that if we go to the session folder here we've got those audio files have been converted to 24 bit and they're all stored in this audio files folder in the session folder. So the session folder is a container that you want to have all the assets you need to work on your project. So I want to unselect all these. So I'm going to hold down the option key and click. All right. So let's get about organizing this. Uh, we need to get our tempo happening. And let's see, what do we got here? All right, so this looks to be, right, so it looks like we've got one bar up front. So what I want to do is, I'm just going to move my song start. So I'm going to have five be measure one. And we'll move our tracks. And then what I'll do is I'll select all of these and move them back one bar. All right, so now we've got bit measure one, right? There. Great. And then I've got a little pre-roll in front here. So I'm going to do this a little differently than in the past tutorials. I'm going to do this as if I was looking at a score. So I've got trumpets, three trumpets. I'm going to move them up to the top. And then I've got, I don't have an alto sax, but I've got a tenor. I've got a tenor solo. And then I've got a baritone sax and two bass clarinets. So, and then I've got three bass tracks. Let's do the piano above the bass tracks between the winds, and let's do some color coding. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to color code all my winds one color, and then what I'll do is my tenor saxes, I'll do a variation of that color. And the two baritone saxes, 
I'll do another variation of that color and the bass clarinet. Let's see. There we go. I'll leave the piano the way it is. I've got three bass tracks. We'll color code those. And I don't have any special colors for things. I'm just going through it. So we've got overhead, kick and snare. I'm not sure if it makes a difference as to which one is at the top of that or at the bottom of that. Okay, great. So now um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some groups. So I'll click on the trumpet and then click down to the bass clarinet and then command G in Pro Tools. And then the group one will be uh, brass and winds. Brass winds. Good. I'll leave the piano. doesn't need a group. And then I've got three bass tracks, so I'll group that. And then I've got drums. So drums. Now, the next thing I need to do is some routing. So I've got, let's see, I've got, I'm going to do all my winds and brass to one output, all three bass tracks to another output, and then my drums to another output. So I need one, two, three. I need three tracks, and then I also need three VCA masters, and then I need a couple of tracks for time-based effects, and then I need a track for routing all the music, and then I need a master track. And let me show you how all that works. So let's go down to the bottom here. Command Shift N. So I'm going to do three. I could I could set this up one stereo augs input and we'll call this winds brass. And this stuff I'm doing now is really important. It saves you a lot of time going down. I'll do another augs input and that will be bass. Oops. And then another augs input, which is stereo, which will be drums and then another stereo and uh, augs input and then this will be reverb one and then I'll, I'll add a second reverb whoops augs input and then I'll name this reverb two I typically name these afterwards but I just thought I'd try naming these now and then stereo augs input, and we'll have that be delay. Don't know if I'll need a delay line, but. And then a stereo augs input for the music. I know this seems like a lot of work, but it does make a difference in the quality uh, of and how you work. And then one stereo master fader, and then uh, one VCA master. We'll just do three VCA masters. And then we'll create. All right, and I've got all these here. And then I'm going to solo safe all of these. Good. And then my three augs tracks. I'm going to color code them. And then the reverb and the delay. I'm going to color code those. And then the music, I am going to have no, and on all these other tracks, there'll be no color. All right, great. So let's move our VCAs to positions we can use them with. So right there. Up. And then right there. All right, so this is uh, VCA, and then the group, Brass and Winds, Bass, all right, and then we'll group that with the bass, and we'll group that with the drums. All right, so I want to go here to my setup, my I.O., and I'm going to reset everything in Pro Tools. I'm going to go to my bus, and then I'm going to hit click Default right here. Great. 
so now I can, I've got my winds and brass, so let's do this. I'm gonna click on the top one and then click on the bottom one here. And then I'm gonna hold Command, Option, and Shift, go to the input and select the first bus, and then it will sequentially put all the rest in there, right? So now I'll just go through the process of renaming. And drums, whoops, right click. And then I don't know, I'm just gonna call this reverb one for now. I have to figure out what kind of reverbs I wanna use for this. And then this will be reverb two. This will be delay. And then this will be music. And then what I want to do is I want to take the outputs of all these and route them to the music track. Great. And then now my brass, I'm going to out route those. So I'm holding down Option and Shift. And I'm going to my winds and brass. They all get routed. My three bass tracks. Do, 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 do. My three bass tracks instead of my three sons. And then my drums. And I'm holding, again, just holding on option and shift, going to drums. Great. All right. So I've got all this stuff. And let's see, let's add a marker. I know that this is an intro here. And let's take a listen to what we've got. I'm going to bring the output of the music track down a little bit. And I'm going to do some, I'm going to put into the master, I've got a meter plugin uh, from TC Electronics. It's the Clarity. It's on my desktop, and it'll let me get a really good view of what my levels are. So let's play this, and that is really loud. So... Let's go to the source right here. I could tell just from the beginning of that that it's very hot. So I'm going to select all these tracks, right? And then I'm going to bring the clip gain down about 7 or 8 dB on all of them. So I'm holding down Shift and Control and the downward facing arrow. Now let's take a listen. Better. So I'm just taking a listen right now. So I've got a, I know the song really well. I would probably listen to the whole thing. I would probably take some notes and uh, and maybe write jot a few things down on a note paper or have an iPad open or an app on a, something and type some notes in. But I've got a pretty good idea of what I want to do with this because I've mixed it a couple of times before. But I'm going to go through now and I'm going to mark up. So the verse right there, verse. One. And then over here is, I don't know what you'd call that. I'll call that uh, chorus for lack of a better, better term. Then there's verse two. And then that's chorus two. So all this stuff, especially when you're mixing something that's like some of my film scores are have a hundred tracks and then I bring them down to stems doing this kind of detailed organization really helps in the long run makes your life a lot better okay so right there 
sax solo. So there's two solos. So there's a baritone solo and a tenor solo. So I'm going to have to choose which one I like better. And another verse. And then right here we've got the uh, chorus. And the chorus repeats, but I'm not going to mark that up. And then right here, trumpet solo. And this is another, that's kind of a variation on the chorus there. So I'll just call that chorus four, I believe. Right there is verse four also, I believe. I can rename those later. Whoops. And then right here is outro. Great. Now, I can navigate anywhere with just a couple of... Um, clicks on my keyboard. So let me show you what I mean by that. So if I hold up my memory locations, and a lot of guys keep this open here, if I do uh, on the numeric keypad, if I do on the numeric keypad, decimal point, one decimal point, I go back to the top of the song. If you want to go to the sax solo, it's decimal point, six decimal point. And this is a great way to navigate if you want to quickly see what levels in different sections of the song are, you can just fly through it. So you can see how you can quickly jump back and forth, and that's really helpful. It's very helpful in a lot of ways. All right, let's... Uh, let's start working. So we need some kind of reverb. So I think I'm going to do two kinds of reverb. I'm going to do, now I could, I typically mix this with the factory stock plugins, but I think I'm going to do a little bit more than that this time. So let's do, um, let me put the fab filter in here and let's just do a medium room. And we'll see what that's like. Whoa, a little too short. We'll make that. We might have to do some tweaking of that as I hear what it sounds like. And then I'm going to make this a plate. So if I go to reverb and look for plate, I like this um, pure plate from UAD, which is really simple to use and sounds great. And then for delay, Let's just use the H delay, which I like. I could change that later. And so then now I'm going to change the name of this to plate. And the reverb one I'll call uh, room. Okay, so let's start from the bottom and work our way up. So let's now, why, why do I have VCA masters? VCA masters are great tools because I can just solo the drums from here. And then I've got my AUGS track if I want to do compression over the whole kit or EQ over the whole kit. So they sound pretty good. I think what I want to do with the kick is to add a little bit more beef on that low end there. So let me go to um, EQ. 
EQP1. Just listening to the I don't want to add too much. Just want to add a little heft there. So now let's listen to what the snare sounds like. So I'm going to just do a little high pass filtering on that and get rid of some of that uh, kick drum. But I don't want to get rid of the tone of the drum. All right, so on the whole kit, I'm gonna go down here and I think I'm gonna add just a little bit of shine on the top end of the kit. So I like to use the HEQ, it's one of my favorites. And just let's lift this up. Now, I don't know if you can hear this, but around 10K, I'm just going up 2 dB up there, right? You don't want to make it like that. That's way too exaggerated. And every EQ has a different way it affects the sound, but I just want a little bit. So I think that's a good starting point. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just add a little bit of room because I know that the drums record in a very small room. So let's try. Oh, what am I doing? I want to do a send. I don't need both of those inserts. So just do the inserts. Great. And I don't need the instrument track either because we don't have any MIDI tracks here. So right here, I'm just going to go out of the bus to room. want to make it a little brighter so I'm bringing the EQ on the reverb up. I kind of like this time, one and a half seconds. I could bring it down a little bit. All right, great. So now let's add our bass. Let's so just solo the bass first. Now with the bass we've got, let me make these tracks bigger. And I, let me just close this for now. I've got the direct input. Let's listen to that. Then I've got the K184. This was up by where the left hand is on the net fingerboard of the bass. You can hear it's got a snappier tone. And then the TLM 103, which is a Neumann mic, that's down by the about six inches away from the bridge. Gets a lot more fuller there, right? So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with this as our core tone and we're gonna balance that in with the drums. So we'll solo the drums and we'll try to get a good balance between the two of those. So the bass is too loud, so I'm gonna actually do clip gain and bring it down about two and a half dB. I brought it down a little too much. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna do something similar that I did with the drums and I'm gonna add some low end using the pool tech. Yes, I have an insane number of plugins. I go up a little higher this time and boost that up and bring the bandwidth up. So 
great and now let's add that's now it's getting to be a little much so let's bring that down I'll turn off the 184. Just adds a little snap on the top end. Off. All right. Next, let's uh, let's we've got this DI here. And it's kind of useless in a certain way, but this actually is kind of cool because we can play around with this and maybe do something creative with this and add maybe a little grit to the to the actual overall bass sound. So let's open up our plugins and maybe I'll go to Sound Toys. They've always got some fun stuff. Oh, save as you work. <laughs> always save. So let me turn this off. I'll stop playing it. Go to Sound Toys. And let's add in, uh, let's try the, let's try the Devil Lock Deluxe. Right, so what I want to do to blend this in is I've got it way down and just raise the volume until I start to hear it. So that's too much, let's bring it down. So I just mute it and I listen for the difference. Too much of this crush here. So what happened is that I've got this first one balanced with the drums, but I've added these two other bass uh, tracks in. So that means that the overall aggregate volume of the bass track is going up. So let's. And let's take a look at the uh, overall bass track. And what I think I want to do is I'm going to, let's try, uh, let's try this old, oldie but goodie. And after that, I'm going to put a C4. And I like this preset here and then to tweak it, the electro mastering. just doing some frequency dependent EQing. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of that room to the bass. It sounds very, very dry. And you don't want to have too much reverb on the bass, but you do want to have a little bit so that it blends in with the drums. And that's dependent upon the style. There might be some, there's plenty of styles where you don't want any any reverb on the bass because you just want the bass to cut through like a knife. So I'm going to have to do some, some work here. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to select the verse here. The drums are playing very softly, right? So I can automate the volume. And then I can copy this and I can go to verse two. Right, I'm, so you can see that I'll do some dynamics. Now, 
I don't always do it like this, but this just seems to be the way that I'm doing it now. Let's see. I'm, I'm a little bit late here, so let's do this. And we'll have a gradual increase. All right. So that's good. Now let's add, uh, let's take a listen to our piano. Okay, so the piano's a little muddy. Oh, I've got the piano going through the bass track. I was wondering where there was reverb. There we go. It's too loud. I'm gonna bring that down here. And then now I'm gonna get some EQ and I'm gonna work on the sound. I'm gonna use that H EQ again. And most pianos you'll find that they, to fit in with the track, you'll need to dip around 500. So I'm gonna bypass it and, and have it back in. You, uh, let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing the bypassing. So it's not in. Right, so just this tiny little curve here gets rid of that nasal honk in the piano. And then I'm also going to do a high pass filter. Good. And then I'm just going to add a little bit. I think I'm going to try the plate with this and see what that sounds like. I should also open the plate and get a sound. Oh, that's way too much. And let's turn down the bass on that. Oh, we It's amazing, you turn the bass down a little bit and you can have it a little longer. See, there's a little something here. Yeah, so I'm gonna do something that's cool with Pro Tools. I'm gonna open this up, and then I am gonna go to Clip Effects, right? So with clip effects, I can affect just this little area here, right? And so in this area, I want to have a little bit more biting. There we go, that's better. That second chord, the second chord of the bam, ba bam, that second da dam gets a little muddy without this in. Listen, that's fine, but listen to the second, right? That second chord gets, I didn't play that well. So I need to, better. And then once we get here, the clip gain is, the clip effect is off. That's a cool feature in Pro Tools, I love that. All right, so, Getting a good basic level. And then we can bring this down a little bit more because we added gain with the EQ. And the reason we want this to be punchy is that it's doubling this, like all this bass clarinet and baritone sax playing that also. Okay, so that's good. Let's go here to our brass and winds and let's, let's we got a lot of stuff here.
All right, so I'm going to do some consolidation work. There's no reason why this needs to be in three tracks here, the trumpet. So if I grab this, copy this from here, I can paste this there. Copy this, paste this there, and we no longer need this. So let me hide and make that inactive. And now the trumpets are on two tracks. And let me just and let me just make sure that there's no clicking here. Great. So basically, what we have is this is the solo trumpet here. Uh, right here. <laughs> so what we need to do right now is everything is panned in the center. So I want to make a, and let's do this. Let's the Barry sax. Let's move this up one level so that we've got our low instruments here, all right, and I'm going to just solo the barrel one and the bass clarinet one and take a listen. And then I think what I'm going to do for right now is I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add some of that plate to the brass because brass and plate sounds great and, and piano and, and plate sounds good too, but it's not as usual to use it, well, too much. I'm going to balance these out. And then let's listen over here. So all these here, I'm going to separate that out and I'm going to bring, I like to do clip gain mixing because uh, I can do it all in one window. Great. And now let's take those over and then we've got tenor I'm going to mute the Barry solo for the time being two tracks of tenor and two tracks of trumpet so I have to make a decision here right so I've got the baritone sax at you know at, at about 80 to the right or to the left and the bass clarinet about 80 to the right in terms of panning I don't want to go so extreme with my top brass so maybe the trumpet will go like maybe 40 to the left and my tenor will go 40 to the right and I'm going to listen these are just starting starting points and notice how I since I did all that preparation work at the beginning I separated all that activity out so now I can focus in here on just doing the mix stuff right and it just makes a really it just works really well so let's go from here where it looks like there's all four instruments playing So the trumpet's not loud enough. So what typically what people would do is they would naturally just turn the trumpet up. And that may be the correct answer. But what I like to do is listen to what's too loud. And to me, it seems that the tenor sax is too loud. And the baritone. So this actually needs to come up again when you're hearing it in all there. Now, I am going to bring the trumpet up a little bit. And let's take a look at that. Let's go to slip mode here. 
And here comes the ethical question, right? Trumpet player was a little late here. Do I keep him late? Or do I separate that out and make it tight with the tenor? Because the tenor is tight with the... You can see that the, the rhythm... Right, these all start almost in the exact same place. So this needs to just go back just a little bit more. Yeah, so my trumpet friend, who's a fantastic trumpet player, he's a little laid back in general. Not everywhere, because right here he's a little ahead of the beat. So do I fix it? Why not? You don't want to go crazy with this stuff. What I do want to do is hear all the, tr all the notes, right? And right here, this note here is way too soft, so I can't hear it. Yeah, so these guys are still a little bit too loud overall. So I can bring just the overall volume of those tracks down. And again, the sax is too loud here. All right, so let's start listening to this with the whole track. So right at the beginning there, I've got boom and the bass, ba doo ba 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 da. The 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 brass is covering that bass up. So I've got my VCA here, which is great. So I can just do this and just do a little decrescendo there, give it a little help. Right. Just do a little time. And I use the pencil tool sometimes. I, I do clicking like this now sometimes. I don't have one particular way that I change volumes. You notice and sometimes I'm using clip gain. I don't often go into the uh, volume on the volume view. I do sometimes, but that's one reason why I've got the VCA. I can see what I'm doing here. I don't have to, where did I do that volume ride? And you know, then move to this. I like to keep things so that they're easy for me to see. So what I'm going to do here with the bass to help bring that out is I'm going to take this crunchy DI and just in that one section I'm going to turn it up a little. Yeah, that grit helps to cut through. Piano's a little loud here, so let me just take the overall volume down. So you see, it's already taking shape. It's already sounding really good. Okay, so right here, da da ba ba da da ba ba. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna separate. These guys are too loud here, and let's just get that whole thing. And then one, two, three, four, five. So I brought that down two and a half degrees. And then I can bring this up a little bit. Up, oh, not there. So right there. And bring that up there.
All right, so I'm starting to rethink this drum thing I did here. I'm going to delete this for now and just leave the natural dynamics. So mm -hmm. see, nothing is sacred, right? As I'm working, I'm making, I'm hearing things and I'm making new decisions based upon different moves I've made. It's kind of like a chess game, right? Mm -hmm. Drums might be a little too loud here still. I'm going to leave them for now. That drum hit is way too loud, right? Let's see if I do some clip gain there. If it doesn't, it might sound weird going into the next beat, the downbeat. Let's see. Better. So I'm going to make a little um, determination here on the trumpet sound. Let me take a listen. I like the fact that it's really rich and, and it's got a beautiful tone. It's not shrill at all. Um, Bud's a great player. These are all, uh, everybody who's playing on here is a, a very busy New York City, well, was when there was a music scene, <laughs> unlike now where there's nobody working at all. Uh, very busy New York City musicians. So let me just take Bud here, and I'm going to do some EQ work. I think I'm going to do a little high-pass filter, which is... And I think that that's all I'm going to do for right now. And let me listen to the tenor as well. It's a little boxy. I, I was recorded in a small booth, and you can hear the sound of the booth in there, and I'm not sure if I can get that out. Let's leave it for now, and I've made a note of that. Yeah, see, just doing that little, just doing that high-pass filter, and now the trumpet's much easier to hear, and, and it doesn't still doesn't sound thin. You're just getting rid of frequencies that are conflicting with other instruments, like the bass and the piano, and then... You're carving out a space for that trumpet. So I'm going to do the same thing here and just option click, drag that up to the other trumpet part. And if I have to change it later on, I will. But for right now, we'll leave it there. So these guys here could be a little bit louder. That's a little loud. All right, so these are getting lost in the mix. They've got a great sound. Let's do this. Let's see if we can do a little corrective EQ on these. So let's listen to the baritone. Let's see if I get rid of some. I'll just take out a little bit here. So on its own, fine. But that there's a little bit of a wooliness around the note, and so I'm getting rid of that, and hopefully it'll, you'll be able to hear it better in the track.
Let's hear how it sounds in the track. Yep. Oh, I don't want to hear the baritone sax. Let's listen to the tenor sax solo here. Let's do this. Let's add a little bit of compressor. And we are going to do a little LA-2A, nice and smooth. All right. Uh, I love the sax solo. It's fabulous. Let's listen to see what the baritone guy does. A little Pepper Adams for you. Pepper Adams, anybody know who Pepper Adams is? <laughs> That's 1970s New York. Great baritone player. You know, I'm not, I'm not feeling that. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to hide and make it inactive and just I'm going to commit to the tenor solo. So I'm going to do this with the winds and the brass. I'm just going to put um, also that C4 across there just to give a light compression and I'm going to go also to my favorite multi-electro uh, multi mastering and then just, you see that's too much so bring the threshold up and again that drum hit is way it's killing me bro right there and it's exacerbated because I made it a little bit brighter you know what I'm going to do this uh, this one I am going to try this kind of a thing here and we'll bring it down too much right whoa <laughs> How did that jump so far? I might play with that more. I'm not sure about that. So right here, verse 3. The piano's a little loud. Just bring it down just a touch. Mr. Tanner can come up. Sax can come up with the bass clarinet's too loud. Ah, look at this. So we've got a riff from the trumpet on this track, and then the rest of the trumpet solo over there. So let's put all this here because. I have a special thing I want to do to the trumpet solo. And I'll copy and just paste that in right there. And then I can just delete or I'm just going to command M and mute that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do a little uh, 1950s uh, Columbia Miles Davis thing and 
add a little delay. Okay, feedback, it's way too much feedback. So you can hear that sounds pretty good, but listen as I bring the delay up, how, it sound, how quickly it is too much and gets too big. It doesn't sound good. Just listen. I'm bringing the level up. Bring the volume up, it's a little soft. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the sax. So I'm gonna save, and then I'm just gonna drag this LA-2A up to the trumpet. And let's listen to how that. Oh, whoops, get the wrong one here. Very smooth, really, it's really great. And at that point, the song just goes out. Now, the mix is sounding really good. I spent about an hour on this track. Obviously, I know the track. I know the track really well, which helps. And it's well recorded. There are some issues with the recording because of the space we recorded it in. Uh, I in 2004 when I wrote this track. Uh, this is from this film called Unknown Soldier, which was a very successful independent film. It won the Los Angeles Film Festival, the Philadelphia Film Festival. It was nominated for an Independent Spirit Award. It played at 20, 30 festivals all over the world. And then it got bought by stars and was on cable four, four or five times a month for like three or four years. So it got a lot of airplay and it, it did really well. Uh, but I was renting a space on 49th Street near... 8th Avenue in Manhattan, a small room about half the size of this room here in a larger post-production facility, and I had a small booth, uh, like a voiceover booth, which was tiny, and I recorded the trumpet, the bass, like I recorded the rhythm section in the other room, uh, and then I overdubbed the trumpet and bass afterwards, uh, and the other room had a larger ISO booth, so the drums sound pretty good, and the bass was sort of in the room. Uh, and we all wore headphones, so that had a nicer sound to it, the, the room sound. But the trumpet and the, all the woodwinds, the, bre the saxophones and bass clarinet, they were recorded in a tiny booth, and you can hear that the, they just were overpowering sound-wise for the, for the room. So after that experience, going forward, I started recording people in the room with me, but because the air conditioning in that room wasn't really quiet, it, w it, it ended up being trouble, so I had to make conscious choices. But that being said, spent an hour. I think this sounds really good. I could spend more time and I could get detailed with all the volumes. And, you know, just there's a couple of spots where the drums, I could bring up some fills or bring down some more hits. And But overall, this is sounding really good. It's in control. And it's been an hour and 10 minutes or so of this. I think I'm going to call it a day. If you've got any questions, leave it in the comment section. And I'll get around to answering it if this is afterwards. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. If you enjoy this kind of content, please subscribe and ring that bell to get notified. I do this live every Friday. I'll be doing this Friday's live probably till the end of the school semester. I teach at the Copeland School of Music 
Queens College and the City University of New York, in addition to being a film and television composer, freelance. Uh, but right now I'm fairly busy with film and television and schoolwork. So instead of making detailed YouTube videos, I'm doing this one hour live presentation every Friday and I'll just pick a different topic, a different subject, and I'll spend an hour doing it. I've got, this is the fourth one in the series. There's three more. There's a playlist if you want to check these out. So again, thank you so much for watching. If you've made it this far, I've been Pete Calandra and I will catch you on the next one.